Today's video is brought to you by an app I have been partnered with since they pretty much started. Chilling. If you don't have the Chilling app, you are seriously missing out. Chilling 2.0 now has a free version you can listen to. But don't worry, if you're paying the $2.99 for your premium version, you get a 100% ad-free experience. You can download the content and a bunch of other perks, come on. We are talking hundreds of hours of scary stories and a bunch of true crime. So if my videos are right up your alley, you are missing out on a lot more content. And now you can listen for free. We're talking full-length novels, podcasts, and more. And this is just the beginning of 2.0. Very soon, we're going to have some more changes. And don't worry, if you do decide to stay with the $2.99 premium plan, you can download the content, so that way if you're not around service, you don't have any skips and you have it there. And you'll have early access to the content. But you can listen for free now. And we also have new creator profiles, and the ability to follow your favorite narrators and authors, so when they put out new content, you will know. I don't know what you're waiting for. Free is the only thing you should have been listening to. Make sure to click the link in the description, get the app today, and you can also listen to it on desktop if you want to. Mm -hmm. I want to give a huge thanks to Chilling for sponsoring this video. And without any further ado, let's begin. Anthony Quinn Warner grew up in Nashville, Tennessee. After high school, he went on to work several IT jobs. He never had a serious criminal record, although in 1978, police busted him for marijuana possession. He lived with his parents for a long time before moving out and living on his own. He was not a social fellow, but the few interactions he had with his neighbors were often friendly. By the time he was 63, he was unmarried and living a quiet life. In 2019, an ex-girlfriend of his reported to police that Anthony was building bombs in an RV that he owned. The police followed up, but eventually closed their investigation due to the lack of evidence. Little did they know that bombs were an interest of Anthony's, and he liked to talk about manufacturing them and the military. In 2020, he actually went on to build several bombs. As the year came to a close, he reached out to retire from work, transferred his car and house to his ex-girlfriend at no cost, and told her he had cancer. On Christmas Day, he parked his RV in downtown Nashville. The RV began to blurt out warning messages such as, All buildings in this area must evacuate now. And, Stay clear of this vehicle. The sound of gunshots then roused residents nearby who called the police. At 5.30 a.m., authorities responded to the scene. An hour later, the RV exploded, killing Anthony and injuring eight other people. Many calls were made to 911 that morning from fearful residents in the area. 911, what is the address of your emergency? It's 2nd Avenue North. We have a recording out here saying there's a limited time to evacuate this area. On one on 2nd Avenue North in downtown Nashville, is that you guys? 2nd Avenue North, we're at on 2nd. 166 2nd Avenue North. There's a recording out there that's saying there's a limited time to evacuate this area. There's a large bomb inside this vehicle. Hmm. Um, let me check and see what we got. Can you please send the police up here? <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm getting dressed. Can you please send the police up here? Yeah, we definitely can. 166 2nd like Avenue North. It looks like we have them I'm right sorry, now. I'm sorry, I'm in a panic. Okay. Um, the, we do have officers right out, out there, like right near 178, which is right. Right, are they reporting anything about this recording that we're hearing? Um, we got, like, a call about shots being heard. Yeah, shots, but now there's a, re there's, a, there's a sound on there that says there's a limited time to evacuate this area. There's a large bomb inside this vehicle that is playing over and over and over outside. Gotcha. And I was just concerned that that's the police car saying that. <laughs> yeah, uh, well, um, I don't see anything in this call, but they are out there, so I don't know... Okay, okay, thank you. Call. I'm going to look out the window. Do you want thank to you. speak to an officer? No, no, no. I'm just going to get dressed real quick. <laughs> thank okay. you. All Merry right. Christmas. Bye. Merry Christmas. Bye. Oh, my God. What is the address of your emergency? Oh, my God. Sir, my entire building just fell down, and it's collapsing. I live at 162nd Avenue North. Please come. Please. So the entire building just collapsed. Vehicle. The reef, the reef was collapsing in. Okay. okay. Yeah. Stay with me. Oh, my God. Stay with me. You're okay. You oh said 167 Avenue oh North, correct? Yeah. Yeah. It's, okay. Maybe it's just like, I don't know what's going on. Ralph, come on. Ralph, okay. come on. Stay with me. I'm getting my shoes now. Yeah, I'm getting my shoes. I'm going downstairs now. Okay, ma'am. Oh, my what God. What is your name? 
Mallory Lucian. Mallory Lucian. I don't know what's going on. Okay. Oh my God. Stay with me. Maybe Stay it's just me. my roof. I don't you're know. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you're you're perfectly fine. Stay with me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh my God. You're okay. You're doing great. Stay okay. with me. Okay. I just I need to get my keys. I need to know where they are. I don't know. You said you have kids with you? Okay. okay. No, just my dog. Okay. I got him. What's the phone number you're calling? Oh my God. Everyone's out. Oh my God. I've got to get up. Oh my gosh. What? Six. Okay. We have to get out. We can't be up here. All right. Come on. Come on, Ralph. It's. Oh my God. I think it's an explosion. Ralph, watch out. All right, ma'am. All we already have, re- we have responders on the way, okay? I need to go. 911 is backing up. I want you to get out of that place immediately. 911 is already. Okay, I need to let you go. Yeah, get we're out all of the getting out. Immediately. Okay, bye-bye. Right. Thank you. 911, what is the address of your emergency? 178 2nd Avenue North. 178 2nd Avenue North? Yes. Okay, what's the phone number you're calling from? I don't want to give it. Okay, what's your name? Brian. Brian, what's going on there? There have been three rounds of gunshots inside the building. First about seven or eight minutes ago, and then about five minutes ago. What floor are the shots on? I can't tell. Okay. It's a four-story building. Four-story building, okay. And it has an atrium within the middle of the building. So there's four units on each floor. And there's four floors, and there's an open atrium. Okay. Did you see or hear anything else? No. They're in the building. Okay. And just to verify, it's going to be 178 2nd Avenue North, is that correct? Yes. Okay. Do you want to talk to officers when they come out? No, I'm too scared to come out of the apartment. Okay, well, I want to advise going out of the apartment, okay? But I'm going to go ahead and let you go. If something changes or gets worse, give us a call back. Please tell me, though, how are the cops going to get into the building? What do you mean? How are they going to get into the building to investigate this? What do you mean, how the cops going to get inside? Well, there's gunshots going on in the building. Well, the officers would take every precaution they can to get inside the building to make sure everything's okay. Okay. Thank okay. You. You're welcome. The authorities quickly found out that Anthony was behind the bombings and his DNA was all over the scene of the explosion. They searched his home after and confiscated a computer, but after interviewing neighbors and his family and friends, they could still not determine Anthony's motive. The FBI did, however, uncover that Anthony was a firm believer in conspiracy theories and had spent much of his time looking for aliens in a nearby park. He believed that aliens were responsible for 9-11 and that the media were involved in covering the truth from the people. The FBI also found a note they read, There is no such thing as death. 42-year-old Denise Nichols was living in her mobile home in the Rose Bay area in Port Orange, Florida. On October 5, 2020, her home caught on fire. What's especially tragic is that she could not escape the fire because she had a disability. The fire raged on and began to completely demolish the home. Meanwhile, her neighbors gathered around to figure out what to do. Her screams were quite loud and although a few neighbors tried to help, the fire was too large. Finally, an observer dialed 911. 911, where is your emergency? Hi, I'm on the uh, Rose Bay Trailer Park, 5200 South Nova Road, Lot 28. Trailer is burning, it's on fire, there's a woman inside of it. Okay, you said 5200 Nova Road, what city? Uh, Port Orange, ma'am, Port Orange. Is any, and what was the lot number one more time, please? I think it's 28, ma'am. I'm in... Okay, do you have the street name inside the park? I don't know. It's, 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 you come in and you stay to the right. You don't know the street name? Sorry, you don't know the street name? No, ma'am, I don't. It's in the Rose Bay Trailer Park. Okay, hold on. Sir? 
Is anybody inside the mobile home? Yes, there's a crippled woman inside. She can't get out? No, she's crippled. Okay. And what's on fire? The trailer. Her mobile home is on fire, but she lives there. Okay, so I'm sorry. It's I just want to specify it. Is it the entire thing? You can see smoke and yes. flames? Yes, huge flames. It's going up okay. now. I, I already have the call for the fire department, okay? The fire, is it in the it's, front of the part of the mobile home, on the it's side? It's inside of the whole motor home. Okay. She's laying inside. We can't get her out. Okay, um, one second. I'm just going to update them, okay? Can you guys see her from where you're at? She's burning up. The flames are coming out of her room. Okay, just try to. St I don't want you guys to go in there, okay? That's the most important she thing. Because if you go in there, it's not out. helping the situation. It just went out, ma'am. Hold on. She's in there dying. The screen is on fire now. Okay, so they're on the way. I just need they're you to help me. To it. Okay, sir, if I'm looking at the mobile home, if I'm looking at the trailer, do I go to the right or to the left to get to her? To the right. To the right. Okay. The trees are on the side. She's done. Get out, get out of there. Don't let anybody go in there. Get out. Get out. Get out. Hang on. Sir, what is your name? My name is... Okay. And she's disabled and can't move at all. She's dead. She's Why do you fight. say that? Because she stopped screaming. Hang on. They've got a hose on it, a garden hose. Who is? My dad's got a garden hose on it, but she... Okay. What, and I'm so sorry. Give me your name one more time. Okay. What is your phone number? No, I don't want to tell you. It's just blowing up. It's all happening over there. If it's exploding or anything is doing that, definitely tell them to just stop putting water on it because we don't know what started the fire. We're getting them out of there now, man. No, okay. Right. We've got and nobody went into the mobile home, right? Uh, my dad and the neighbor went in to try to save her. She was laying on the floor and there were flames. It was, there was no, she was already screaming. I, I looked out my window and came out here and saw the fire. Okay. And are they out and they're okay? <laughs> Sir? They're out and they're okay. Okay, are they... This is... Yeah, the fire department's almost there, okay? They're coming as fast as they can. Whoa! But your phone... Sir? Hey, stay the other side! Get out of here! Everything! Robert, if she has an oxygen tank in there, that's what's going to cause that. So you need to keep people away from it, okay? I, I don't know what she had, ma'am. I just... I've only ever talked to her once, and I know she was crippled. There's stuff like white and men are playing up. Okay. You're, listen, can you check with your father and the other person? They don't need an ambulance, do they? No. Okay. And you're standing, can you just look around to see if there's a street name or ask someone? Man, there's no street, there's, there's no street name in here. Okay, so when they come there's in no off of Nova, they're there. gonna go to the right and all the way down? Yes, go to the right all the way down to see flames. Okay. They can't stay out of the way. I need to keep you on the phone until the help gets there, okay? Because the, there's an officer almost there, too. I hear flames. I hear ambulance. You, you still see the, and you still see the flames or no? Huh? Do yeah, you still see flames? Yeah, it's light. Everything okay. on fire. And it's an RV or a mobile home? Mobile, it's an RV. It's a pull behind. Okay. You're not, yeah, everything's on fire. Okay, I understand. <sighs> She's dead. I understand. She's lying, Dad. <sighs> Are you guys able to wave down the, the officers at all or the ambulance? I think I, they went to the street behind you guys. They're here, ma'am. They're here. Go okay, ahead. I'll go ahead and hang up with you, okay? Right. Thank right. you. Bye-bye. When the firefighters arrived at approximately 2.37 a.m., they found Denise's home completely devoured by flames. Inside the home, they found Denise deceased. Although a coroner report on Denise's death is still pending, the authorities do not believe that there's anything suspicious or criminal that led to the fire. 
They maintain that they have yet to find out the source of the fire as it is an ongoing investigation. April Connolly was getting drunk and doing drugs by the poolside of Perry's Ocean Edge Resort while her three-year-old twins were swimming. Her husband began to pack up their things before the pool closed. At this time, the twins were sitting at the pool's edge. Neither one of the parents were paying attention when one of the children went back into the water. Thankfully, a desk clerk was watching the security feed from the surveillance camera and saw one of the three-year-olds at the bottom of the hot tub drowning. His brother, who had the floaties, simply watched on before running off to get help. The next thing, April and her husband watched as the maintenance man jumped in to save the boy. When he brought him out, he found that the boy was not breathing. A nurse who had also seen the horror unfold came downstairs and revived the boy with CPR. The boy had been underwater for about two minutes. Shortly after her son was revived, April went over to the trash can to throw away the drugs she was taking which included marijuana, oxycodone, suboxone, I probably said that wrong because I don't know what the heck that is. Meanwhile, a 911 call was made. 911, where's your emergency? Hello? Hey, 911, um, Perry's Hotel, we have a kid drowning. Um, okay, where, 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 okay, where's the hotel? What's the address? Perry's Hotel Resort, hurry. Okay, where? Where is Perry's Hotel? Perry's Hotel is A1A. Where on A1A? Let him go. What city are you in? Daytona Beach, 33118. What's the closest cross street or the address for the hotel? Hey, what's the address there, Mike? 22209 A18, Daytona Beach Stores, Florida. Okay, do you know the closest cross street or anything nearby you? Um, to Gwen Dixie. Okay, 2209 at South Atlantic Avenue and your day's Daytona Beach Shores? Yes. Okay, you said you're right next to a Winn-Dixie, and this is the Perry's yes. Ocean Edge Hotel? Yeah, Perry's Edge Hotel. Okay, not the Perry's White Cap, but the Perry's Edge? Yeah, we're getting a break there. Okay, and you said there's a kid that's drowning? Yeah. Um, we got him to breathing. We got him to breathing, but barely. Okay, so is, is he, he is breathing? Yeah, yes, we got him. He's crying okay. now. How old is he? He's probably about three years old, four years old. Three and it's a male? Uh, yeah. Is he awake? Yes, he's crying now. Okay, and he is out of the pool, you said, right? Or was yes, he I'm ocean? a boy here. Yeah. Okay, was he in the pool or the ocean? Um, he was in the pool area. Okay, how long was he underwater? We do, we do not know. Okay. We don't know. Well, do you know what he was doing before this happened? I got 60 seconds. We were walking up there, and I thought I saw somebody in there, so I all the time to They called about some kid in the room, and I didn't live in here, so I just... Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay, so you know what he was Probably doing? Probably four years old. Did he fall in or? Nah, we don't know. Um, we caught something on the camera and, and, and we came running. Okay, Probably about so three the parents of the child there? Huh? Are the parents of the child there? Yeah, the dad and the mom are there. The parents or the parents yeah. there or was the no, kid by himself? No, we don't know where the Oh. Yeah, um, we got the parents here. The parents are there? Okay. And you, okay. Just try to keep them warm, okay? And don't move them around. Yeah, hey, you gotta keep them warm. Did, was he not breathing at one point? I know you said that. You what? Was he not breathing at one point? Um, don't move her. Do not move her at all. Was he not breathing at one point? Then yeah, you yeah um, I mean, yeah, um, he wasn't breathing at all. We got him to breathe. In the pool, is it right behind the hotel? Uh, no, it's, it's an indoor pool. It's an indoor pool? Yes. It's on the ground floor? I don't know, how you that? Is it on the ground floor of the hotel? Yeah, ground floor. When they come through the front of the hotel, where do they need to go to get to the pool? 
go meet the animals out front. Go meet the animals out front. Is that the child crying in the background? Yeah, yeah, that's it. We got him. Um, he's crying. We, we got him spit up water and everything. So. The authorities transported the boy to the hospital immediately. At first, he was taken to Halifax Health Medical Center, but since his condition continued to worsen, he had to be moved to Arnold Palmer Children's Hospital instead. At the hotel, the authorities investigated the near drowning, only to find out that his mother had completely neglected him. They also saw her throw her drugs away on the surveillance footage, which led to April confessing that she was getting high and relaxing because she thought her children were being watched. She was jailed without bail, but a judge later released her on the condition that she remained sober. She was also not allowed to be in the presence of her children without a supervisor. The young boy who nearly drowned did survive the incident. Fifty-one-year-old Michael Road and seventy-two-year-old Sandra Road were married and lived together at Tradewinds Terrace Apartments in Traverse City, Michigan. They were together for about 15 years before they got married. They were a quiet couple. Neighbors say they often kept to themselves, but financial troubles started to lead to arguments. On June 6, 2015, their quarrels escalated to a point of no return. On that day, they received a call to remind them of a $400 bill that was outstanding. Michael was under the impression that Sandra had paid the bill, but it turned out Sandra had lied about that. One argument led to another and they found themselves fighting about the life insurance policy of a family member. Michael wound up strangling Sandra. He then went to the kitchen and returned with a cast iron pan which he used to hit her on the head. Finally, Michael got a knife from the kitchen and stabbed Sandra in the chest. Michael contemplated running after ending Sandra's life, but resolved to turn himself in. First, he left his parents a message admitting to what he had just done. Then he dialed 911. 911, what's your emergency? Hey, ma'am? Yes? Uh, yeah, uh... Um... What's going on? Uh, I, just, I just killed my wife. You just killed your wife? Yes, ma'am. What happened exactly? Well, what happened, uh, I, I was in the phone, you know, the man, you know, and the guy said he had to pay $400, and she said she did, and, and she lied, you know, uh, ma'am. Yes. And then she, you know, this crap, you know, and then she turned around and pushed me and shoved me, you know. <sighs> What uh, happened to her? What did you do to her? Okay, I, I, I had a frying pan, you know. Ma'am? I'm listening. I had a fry, I had a frying pan, and then I, and then I went, and I got a knife. I did. Did you stab her? Yes, I did, ma'am. Okay, I want to check and see how she's doing, okay? How old is your wife? Oh, I think she's dead, ma'am. Okay, well, we're going to go through this anyways, just in case we can help her. How old is she? 57 years old. 57? No, no, 70-something years old. 77. Is she awake? Let me see if Sandy's awake. She's not? Uh. Is she breathing? Uh. I know she's not. What apartment are you in? Apartment 13. Okay. We're going to try to help her out, okay? All right. All right. Thank you. No, stay on the phone with me, okay? Okay, sure. I just have to check. Is there an AED available? What's that mean? It's a defibrillator. Oh, no, ma'am. Okay. Are you right by her now? No, I'm in the living room. Okay. Can you go near her? If there's any chance of helping her, we're going to help her, okay? Okay. All right. I want you to make sure she's flat on her back on the floor and remove any pillows. Uh, yeah, she's on her back. Okay. I want you to lean over her, put your ear over her mouth, and listen to feel for any breathing. Let me know if there's any. Oh, hold on. I can't tell, ma'am. You can't tell? No. Okay. 
I want you to listen to me carefully. I'm going to tell you how to do chest compressions. Okay. Place the heel of your hand on the breastbone in the center of the chest, right between okay. the nipples. Okay. Put your other hand on top of that hand. Okay. Do you understand me so far? Yeah. I want you to pump the chest hard and fast at least twice per second. Right, hold on. I did, ma'am. Hello? Yes. I did. Oh, okay. I want you to keep pumping her chest. We're going to do this 600 times or until help can take over. Okay, hold on. Are you doing compressions? Are you doing compressions, sir? Can you hear me, sir? Hello? Yeah, hey, ma'am? Yes. N nothing. Okay. I want you to keep going, okay? Okay. I want you to keep doing it until they get there. Can you put the phone on speakerphone so I can still talk to you? Hold on. I don't, I don't know how to work this at all. Okay, that's fine. What's your name, sir? Huh? What's your name? My name is Mike, ma'am. Okay, Mike, I want you to keep doing compressions until help arrives, okay? Okay. Where's the knife at? No, no, by me. Okay, I need you to put it away from you. Okay. Okay. The officers arrived and found Michael half-naked with blood all over his body. Sandra lying on the floor, dead from her wounds. Michael told the police what had happened and said he resolved to use the pan and the knife to ensure that Sandra died. The authorities charged Michael with murder and three counts of assault. However, leading up to his trial, an examination showed he was incompetent to stand trial. He was therefore taken to a forensic psychiatric center. Jovier Kennedy was part of the Western Michigan basketball team. On December 8, 2016, he set out to rob an apartment with Jordan Ware. The two of them wanted cash, marijuana, and mobile phones from the four residents in the apartment. While getting away, there was a struggle during which Jovier dropped two mobile phones and Jordan hit 19-year-old Jacob Jones in the face with the gun. The gun accidentally went off, killing Jacob instantly. Once Jovier and Jordan had left, two of Jacob's friends called 911. 911, we're going to Hello? I'm sorry, what? Hello? Hi. Hello? I'm at, um, I'm at the Soho apartment, 760 Soho. Um, someone just um, came into our apartment and with guns, and they shot one of my friends. And they shot one of your friends? And they shot him in the head. They shot him in the head. Shot him in the head. Hold on. Hold on. Are you, are you stay on the phone with me. Okay. What did they look like? What did they look like? Um, they had um, black hoodies on. Um, there was one that was like a skinny guy. He had like a lighter skin tone, okay. and he had a... Um, he was dark. He was a dark skin, like he was like I don't know, maybe Arab or something. Okay. And he had like a um, he had a uh, red bandana wrapped around his. No, he had a red bandana wrapped around his um mouth, and you okay. could see his eyes, and he had a gun, and he had a friend who was a tall black guy with a um black hoodie tied around his head. Okay. And he had a gun. It was. He pulled the gun out. And he okay. Okay. Stay on the phone. Take a deep breath. Okay. Take a deep breath. Did they leave in a vehicle? I don't know. They broke me. They made us open the door. They they tried to come back upstairs and they made us give them all of their phones. Okay. They made they tried to take all of our phones. Did you see what directions that they left? No. No, we are in the very top floor. Okay. Um, oh, I know who it was. That guy, he was like, okay, okay, our friend was like talking about this guy. He was like, he said that he wanted, he, was like, he said that he wanted to buy weed from him. And then he said it seems like really sketchy because all of a sudden he said he wanted to buy way more weed than he ever said he was going to sell. He said he was going to sell him like three grams or something. And then he okay. said, then he said that he was going to sell them. Then he said that he was going to sell them like an ounce. Was that your friend or was that another guy? Um, that was my. That was the friend who got shot. Okay, where is your friend that was shot? He's he's laying on the ground right now. Is he, can you send someone, please? Yeah, we can send someone, please. Yep, yeah, just stand the phone, okay? Is he is he inside the home? Seven sixty. 760 yep. Soho. I know. We have we have Stop. Susan Rout. Don't open the door. 
760 Soho. Okay. Stay on the phone with me. Stay on the phone. Don't go in there. How many people are? No, no, no. Please don't go out there. Please don't open the door. Stay inside the house. Okay, please. Don't let anyone in. Don't let anyone in. Stay inside the home. Until we have officers there, okay? We don't have anybody there yet. Please. Okay, I don't want anyone to come in. Stay on the phone. Okay? Looks like we okay. have one that just arrived, but stay on the phone until... Okay, fine. Okay. Are you a roommate? No, no. I'm over here with friends. Okay. We just came over to hang out. Okay. <laughs> just stay on the phone. No. How many is in the apartment? How many of you are in the apartment? No. Um, there's three, four of us in the apartment there's right Four now. in the apartment? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just stay on, no. stay on the phone. Okay. okay. Wait. Okay. Um, but, yeah, one of them was a short, skinny, um, I think he was um, Indian or Arab or something, and he... He had a he had jeans on and a like black sweatshirt with a hood up and then he had um sorry and he had a red bandana over top of his um face okay <laughs> okay did you see the gun? did you see what yeah. that looked like were they long I don't know whose phones those are huh? were they long guns. Um, he had a gun, and it was like I don't know what kind of gun it was. It was like a sil- like silver. It was silver. Um, okay, I I'm going to talk to the officer. Are they there? Yes. Okay. All right. Bye. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye. Nine one one emergency. Yeah, someone is breaking into our apartment right now. Where at? They're armed. One of our friends got shot. Okay, stay on the phone with me. I'm gonna get people on route. Okay. Can you tell me what's going on? I told you exactly what's going on. Okay, well, I need you to read. I'm sorry. So somebody is shot, you said? Yes. Okay, how injured is he? Like, are, you, are you all breathing? I don't know, man. I think he might be gone. Okay, we have help on the way, sir. What's your next to South Howard, correct? Yes. Okay, what did the person look like that shot him? Uh, they were covered up. Okay. Bandana. Did, you, did you see which way they went? No, I have no clue, man. I'm sorry. What did they say to you? They were just coming in, sitting on your phones and stuff, and just started busting up the place through the Xbox on the ground. I don't know. Okay, there was two of them, or three of them. How many were there? Two of them. Do you know if they got in a vehicle and left or on foot? I would assume so. We're all... We're on the fourth floor, so... Okay. Is your friend breathing at all? I don't think so. He didn't respond. There's a lot of blood. Okay. Are you able to just get, to get next to him to just, just hear if he's breathing at all? I don't think so. Okay. All right. Just stay in this one. We've got help on the way to you. Oh, my gosh. <clears throat> all right. What else are you seeing around you right now? They might be coming back. Okay. Can you shut the door and lock it? It is. What's that? I'm sorry. It, it, it is locked. They're coming now. Okay. Did, you think they're coming back? Yes. Okay. Did they not? Did they take anything the first time? Okay. Do you, do you see them? They're at the door right now? No, I can't. Are they at the door right now, sir? Who is it? It may be the police, sir. Identify. Is anyone else out there? Are you... There should be an officer out there. Stop messing with the door. <laughs> sir, can you tell who it is yet? It's my friend, but I don't know if anyone else is out there. Okay, the police are there. They should be coming up right now, okay? Okay. Just stay on the phone with me. Stay on the phone with me until they get there. Who is it? There's no one. He's on the ground right there. Okay, is that a police officer, sir? Okay, they're here now. Okay, I'll let you go then. 
On December 12th, the authorities charged Jovier with murder and armed robbery. They traced the crime back to him through one of the phones that were dropped at the scene of the crime. During the ensuing trial, Jovier testified against Jordan and his attorneys argued that Jovier's intentions were only to rob and not harm anyone. In the end, the jury found Jovier guilty of the robbery, but he was exonerated for the murder. Jordan was charged with the murder of Jacob. 42-year-old Darren Elmore and 29-year-old Ella Harrison Elmore were broken up. They had nine children together and still shared a home in Reeseville, South Carolina. Despite their estrangement, neighbors say they appeared to be the perfect family. On Tuesday, June 26, 2018, Darren was mowing his lawn in the backyard. He had been fighting with Ella, although the cause of their argument and even their estrangement is still not clear. Ella wound up shooting and killing Darren with Darren's own shotgun. She then placed two calls to 911. An unidentified caller made a third call, although it would be revealed later that that too was Ella. Change? No, I just need them to sit on the 
Since you're breaking up really bad, I can't hear you. Are you on your way? Yes, ma'am. Was someone was someone injured there? Has someone there been injured? Ma'am? When the police arrived, they found Ella at a neighbor's house and arrested her. She was charged with the murder of Darren and she was sentenced to 20 years for manslaughter. Whatever started that final fight is still a mystery. Selena Quintanilla Perez was a famous Mexican singer, rising to fame in the 80s. She hired Yolanda Saldivar, one of her biggest fans to manage her boutique business and her fan clubs. This was after Yolanda persisted in contacting Selena's father to establish a fan club, which grew considerably in the period she presided over it as president. After hiring Yolanda, Selena discovered financial discrepancies. Additionally, fans were not receiving items they paid for. Selena's father, who was also her manager, was receiving letters from disappointed fans who had paid for their memberships without getting anything in return. Lastly, $30,000 of Selena's money was missing. As it turned out, Yolanda embezzled the money using forged checks. Yolanda denied all wrongdoing. She had always been loyal to Selena, and often told Selena's employees at the boutiques that she wanted to be like Selena. A former employee even accused Yolanda of being incredibly possessive with Selena and denying employees opportunities to approach her. But Yolanda was such a trusted individual in Selena's circle that she had keys to the singer's house. Selena set out to recover financial records, some of which were at the Days Inn Motel in Corpus Christi. She also confronted Yolanda and fired her when she reached there. It's unclear how the confrontation played out, but Yolanda, who had a 38 caliber revolver, shot Selena in the back. The bullet burst through Selena's chest. Selena still managed to head to the lobby, leaving a trail of blood over 100 meters long behind her. As Selena lay dying, the clerk in the inn dialed 911. During the call, Selena uttered her last words, Yolanda Saldivar in room 158. Selena was only 23 years old when she died from blood loss at the hospital. She was at the height of her career then, with a promising album on the way. 
Daisy Motel, it's 901 Navigation Boulevard. What's wrong, man? We have a woman ran in the lobby, said she's been shot. She's laying on the floor and there's blood. Okay, we're going to Okay. Where are you? How old is she? She looks about 20. Okay, who saw her? Where is she? She's in the lobby right now? Yes, ma'am. She just passed out. Okay. Still there? I already have to call in. I think you need to send a police unit, too. done it or anything like that? It's another lady, that's all I know. We're trying to find out. Annette, okay, okay, and this lady's about 40 years old? 20. 20. The police apprehended Yolanda as she tried to flee the scene. When asked to divulge her side of the story, she maintained that the gun was not meant for Selena, but herself, and Selena was there urging her not to end her own life. Yolanda's trial received widespread attention. It even had to move away from Selena's hometown to Houston, Texas, so that Yolanda could receive a fair hearing. Her defense argued that the shooting was accidental. However, Yolanda was a licensed nurse, and the fact that she didn't try to help Selena or call 911 after the shooting did not help her case. Furthermore, given the amount of pressure the gun would have required to trigger it, it is highly unlikely that it could have been triggered accidentally. On top of all this, all the witnesses claim that Selena was running away from Yolanda, and given Selena's last words before she passed away, it's clear that Yolanda intended to end Selena's life. In retrospect, Selena's father noted that Yolanda had been trying to murder Selena for quite some time, and on three different occasions she had come quite close. The first time, Yolanda didn't do anything because Selena said she still wanted her to handle her business in Mexico. Throughout that month, though, Yolanda seemed desperate to meet with Selena alone. The second opportunity Yolanda got, there were too many fans around. On the third occasion, Selena was accompanied by her husband. Finally, Yolanda contacted Selena and said she had been raped and needed to go to the hospital. Hence why Selena finally met her alone. Yolanda lost the case and was sentenced to life in prison. She'll be eligible for parole in 2025. Selena's family state that it doesn't matter whether Yolanda will be released or not, because nothing can bring Selena back. Since her death, her family and friends have tried to keep Selena alive through her music. George Bush, when he was governor of Texas, declared that April 16th, the day of Selena's birthday, would be Selena Day. Philip Adams was an NFL pro who played for five seasons. He retired in 2015. 
During his career, Phillips suffered from several injuries during his time in the NFL. In 2012, he missed just a single game the entire season, despite enduring two concussions. Phillip had a criminal past. He had meddled with guns and was also previously arrested for carrying weapons. But apart from these incidents, he was generally known as a quiet guy who liked to keep to himself. His main motivation in life was his mother. And while he was in the NFL, despite his injuries, he was driven to play so that he could take care of her. After retiring, Phillips started a business. It wasn't until April 7, 2021 that he would be on TV screens again. This time for committing horrific crimes against Dr. Leslie and his family, who lived close to where Phillips' parents did. Philip went over to Dr. Leslie's family home, shot Dr. Leslie, his wife Barbara, and their two grandchildren, Ada, who was just nine, and Noah, who was five. You are County 911, do you police fire medical? Uh, police. Where to? Hello? 911. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I think we've had some trouble at 4456 Marshall Road. What's going on on Marshall Road? I think there's been a bad shooting. Maybe four people. Okay, so you think four people have been shot? I believe so. Uh, I, I was cutting grass out in the yard, and I heard some shots. How many shots did and, you hear? Uh, uh, about 20. It's automatic. I think there's two outside, two workers outside, and uh, Mr. and Ms. Leslie's on the inside of the house. Are you over there with them, or are you on a neighboring I'm property? Over. I'm on the property, but I'm away from the house because the guy walked out of the house. It was, uh, I'm quite sure I seen him from a distance. It looked like a black guy in black clothes carrying something red out of the house. And I'm on the other side of the property now. I'm, if the police or something come, I go over there with them, but I don't want to go back to the house. Yes, sir. Don't, don't go over to the house. Okay. I can can you see any road. of the people, like anybody outside? I saw one laying on the ground. It looks like uh, one of the workers. It was a guy working for a heating and air guy. He looks like he's laying on the ground. I saw the guy running around, and I, I heard the popping, but I didn't realize it was shooting until I saw this guy laying on the ground. All right, sir. Can I get your name? Sorry, I'm updating my officers. And Mr. Bree? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I'm calling from a call 911. So I came over here. He's another worker that works here at the place. Alrighty. Is this an okay phone number if we need to give you all a call back? Yes, ma'am. Ma'am? Y'all haven't had any COVID symptoms, have you? No, ma'am. I've had both of my shocks. I'm 80 years old. All right. Where at on their property are you at? Uh, it's at the house. If you come to the arch, I'll meet them at the arch. It's 4456. No, sir. Road. Sir, I don't need you to meet our deputies. I don't need you to get close to the situation, okay? We don't want you getting hurt. I'm not going to be. I'm, I, I'm a, I'm a four, I, I'm almost a half a mile from the situation. All righty. I'll let them know, but I've got some deputies on the way. Okay. Uh, you can call another number, too. Okay. It's All righty. Thank you, sir. That's my telephone. It took deputies less than 10 minutes to arrive at the scene of the crime. The authorities then went to Phillips' parents' house to arrest him. They waited outside as they tried to persuade him to surrender, but Philip wound up taking his own life. The police could not make sense of the killings. The police found out that Philip was Dr. Leslie's former patient. The police considered the possibility that Philip was provoked as he was no longer receiving pain medication from Dr. Leslie. Philip's father, however, believes that the cause of the tragedy was more to do with his son's career in the NFL. Philip's father was pointing to a tragic pattern involving NFL players, where post-retirement NFL players suffering from chronic traumatic encephalopathy, also known as CTE, I probably butchered it, 
go on to commit horrendous, violent crimes against other people or even themselves. Philip's sister, for instance, has stated that her brother's aggression only increased after retirement and was on the decline for a long time. Philip's family decided to donate his brain to a research team to ascertain whether the concussions he had suffered during his NFL career resulted in CTE. It will then have to be determined whether CTE was truly the cause of his violent behavior. On March 25, 2021, Ryan and Julie Eberly were driving on Interstate 95 in North Carolina. They were heading off to a beach vacation they had been planning to celebrate seven years of marriage. While driving, Ryan didn't see a car coming up behind him while switching lanes. The driver in the other car drove past them, shot at them, then took off. Ryan called 911 when he realized Julie had been hit. I don't know, I'm along 95 South. I can't see an exit on my marker. Okay. Okay, sir, I can't. You said somebody shot into your car? Shot into my car, yes. My wife is shot. She's bleeding badly. I need okay, to listen now. to me. Listen to me. I need you to take a breath, okay? I'm showing you're at mile marker 22 in the southbound lane. Are you southbound lane? Southbound lane. Please hurry. Okay, what is your, what is your name, sir? R Ryan Everly. Okay, what is your phone number in case we get disconnected, Ryan? Okay, where is your wife shot at? She's shot in the hip. I'm trying to stop the bleeding. Okay, do you have a clean, dry cloth? I'm, 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 I don't want to put... Hang on. Can you still hear me? Yes, I can still hear you. How old is your wife? Yes, I have a, I have a clean... Can okay, you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. How old is your wife? She's not responsive. Should I lay her down, or...? How old is she? What? How old is your wife? She's 47. Okay, is she breathing? Yes, she's breathing, but very labored. Okay, is she conscious? Uh, here. Is she no, conscious? She's not, she's not conscious. She's not okay. breathing. <laughs> Please hurry. Okay, listen to me. We need to get her flat on her back, okay? Is there any way that you can get her out of the car? Yes, I can. Can you do that for me? Stay with me, Tony. Did you have you got a yes, applying yes, pressure? I, okay. Applying pressure to her wound, yes. Okay. <laughs> Listen to me, you're doing a really good job. I need you to try to stay under control, okay? You're doing a really good job and we've got help coming to you. Is she talking to you? Yes. Yeah. Sir? <laughs> Okay, listen to me. Listen to me. Is her chest rising and falling? Julie, please. Please, sir. Honey. Is her chest rising and falling? Yes, yeah, she's taking very, very shallow labored breaths. Keep breathing, Julie. Keep breathing. No, he's, he's saying they're passing him. <laughs> Julie, keep breathing. Honey, breathe. Breathe, Julie. Is she a conscious? No, she's not conscious. Conscious. Okay. Keep breathing. Keep breathing, Julie. Very, very slow and labored. Oh, my God. You're going to do chest compressions. Listen to me. You're going to do chest compressions until somebody gets there. Do you know how to do CPR? Yes. Just above her okay. sternum, how many? How many in a row? As many, as many as you can in a row. Keep going. Just count them out loud for me. Hurry up! Okay, they're coming just as fast as they can. Keep counting out loud the CPR number. Can you count out loud for me so I can keep up with you? 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 31, 42, 43, 44. Julie, come on! <laughs> okay, sir, you're doing a good job. Keep going, sir. You guys got to hurry! <laughs> they're, 
sir. They're coming just as fast as they can. I need you to continue CPR, sir. The authorities took around 10 minutes to arrive at the scene, and they rushed Julie to UNC Health Southeastern, where she tragically died from gunshot wounds. The police categorized the incident as a road rage encounter. A witness to the shooting described the car the shooter was in, a gray Malibu. She also saw the exit the shooter took and informed authorities. The police used video footage to track him down. Seven days later, the police announced that they had found the shooter, a man named Floyd Dejiwan. He was charged with first-degree murder. Meanwhile, the authorities revealed that Floyd tried to change the look of his vehicle while he was being tracked down. It was also revealed that he had a criminal record and had spent three years in jail after assaulting someone with a deadly weapon and causing serious injury. I really do appreciate you all dropping in. And yeah, this is a compilation video. Uh, I tried to get some stories that weren't covered too much. I got in a pretty interesting accident the other day. My face is pretty mangled. Uh, my knee is jacked up. Essentially, I went over the handlebars on my bike. Uh, somehow I made it home, and then I passed out. And I actually took an ambulance ride. That was pretty cool. So, my apologies. I have uh, a long video I've been working on, but I'm actually able to talk today. But, yeah, I was even told, don't think. Uh, because of the gnarly head crash I took, but I'm alive, I'm well. If you follow me over on Twitter, you'll see the pictures. I shared the day right when I got out of the ER, and then I shared uh, the next day, but things are healing up good, all happy. Regardless, I do appreciate you dropping in and checking out this video. And if you enjoy my content, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. And if you want more, make sure to check out Chilling. Tell you what, click that link in the description. I will catch you guys in the next video. And just remember, it's always scarier if it's true. Bad bye.